Well, good morning, Platinum Top 50 San Antonio. Good morning. Hopefully we got people coming online here pretty quick. We got attendees rolling in. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Mark, Ken, good to see you here. Tatiana, hello, hello. Valerie, hi, guys. Cat Lodge, good to see you. Andrea Elliott, hello, hello, hello. We're so glad to have you here this morning. Ashton Rue, COO of Platinum Top 50, and I am so excited about today's presentation. We have a lot um, we have a lot of exciting things to share with you. Our speaker, Tracy Brown, is phenomenal. She gave the same presentation in Austin for our agents last week. It is engaging, it is fun. Uh, and if you are into true crime, which I am, I love true crime, you are going to love Tracy's presentation because we are identifying the liars in our midst. You are going to be able to leave today's presentation and have a better idea to find out if your clients, your husband, your wife are lying to you just with some simple, simple expert tips from a body language expert in the flesh. But we could not do what we do without our partners. Uh, Y'all have heard us say it before and we will say it every single time. Uh, that we have one of these presentations that um, the partners of PT50 are the backbone of our organization. They keep us going and they allow us to bring expert content to you, the agents. And so today, I mean, we are indebted to Legacy Mutual Mortgage. We have got First American Title and Action Tree Service all supporting today's event. And so I, without further ado, want to introduce Tom Romanello with Legacy Mutual Mortgage. Tom, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? I am great. And I hear that you are, are you on vacation? Or are you out on no, business? No, I'm but working. I'm, I'm, in yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Russia today. So uh, we're having a great time. <laughs> um, I'm having lunch with Putin, Putin a little bit later. So we'll be in good shape. Um, no, it, we're, we're not on vacation. We're, we're working. Okay. Uh, everything looks good. So. Well, we have got a uh, We've got our PT50 team on the road there in the background. We can see uh, Ashley, Ashley there in the background helping me out. So uh, there we go. Kick her I off see for she's a second. Being safe. She's being safe. She's being safe. Distance. She's got her mask on safety first uh, here uh, at PT50. But uh, Tom, Tom, tell us what's going on at Legacy Mutual Mortgage. It has been a busy summer for all of our agents. I know it's been busy for you guys, but we want to hear the latest. We have been super active. We're never too busy for you all. We're super active right now. So mm -hmm. uh, I love that. The market, the market is unbelievable, as you all know. Uh, even going into August when we have school starting, uh, we still have a lot of leads coming in, a lot of contracts, a lot of people want to refinance. Uh, of course, we're pushing the refinances out. The purchase money always takes precedent no matter what. Uh, these people have to move into their homes and we have a lot of people moving into San Antonio and wanting to move to San Antonio because we've got such a great city and the surrounding areas and uh, it's been just super active. We've been very, very blessed this year and uh, really appreciate all the support of everyone. I love that term, like we are active. I think I'm gonna start Correct. using that just in my daily mm -hmm. life because that is true. I mean, busy always sometimes has a bad connotation and I never really think about that, but uh, very good, very good wisdom. So Tom, we are just always so appreciative to partner with you. It's good to see you. Also loved your guest appearance on Comedy for a Cause. <laughs> Last week, I'd be remiss to not- um, I still I would have ask those you pants, have on, so. I was gonna say, do you have the tiger pants on? Yeah. Um, so for those of you who missed it, man, Tom had a had a great little bit. Uh, Tom, we want for people to know how easy it is to get a hold of you. So if you could, in the chat box to all of the attendees, uh, give us your contact information and that way people know how to get a hold of you. And again, thank you so much for bringing us Tracy's presentation and we'll see you in a little bit for uh, your game. We greatly appreciate it. Honored to be with everyone. Thank you so much. Awesome, well, thank you. Well, now we have got um, our friends from First American Title. We have Lindsay Demeshki with us. And Lindsay, um, we were chatting a little bit before. I uh, know that things are a little bit different in the title world these days with working from home and closings looking a lot differently than they normally do. But we want to hear what's happening with First American Title during all of this. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. So obviously, I'm Lindsay with First American. Um, I would say that we have had a lot of um, changes obviously throughout the pandemic and it's been really fun and exciting for our office 
um, in our offices to have the opportunity to be able to kind of shift with the market um, as well. And as um, Tom said, we're, we're super active um, and we're very, um, we do have a lot of people coming in and out. So we've, we've been able to implement things like Zocum and do, um, uh, you know, different apps to receive earnest money. We've done curbside closings. We have all of our offices are set up with hand sanitizers and, um, you know, we were able to do new open house listing kits because obviously now there's new signs and um, that, that need to be put up and just different requirements. So it, it's given us an opportunity to, to be innovative on the marketing side and then also keep our compliance and safety side of things for um, people coming in and, our, in and out of our offices. So um, we've, we have um, enjoyed the challenge of that and um, obviously really appreciate the partnership with PT50 and then, um, you know, our clients that have helped keep us incredibly active even through the pandemic and um, amazing to see how resilient our San Antonio market is. So, thank you. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. And just uh, applaud you guys. I know that y'all are bringing in some new team members. Your offices are across the city and just love to see the new faces that are here to serve our agents. And so Lindsay, again, thank you for bringing us today's program. I know you're going to be a part of a game later. So uh, you'll see Lindsay in the hot seat later on in the program. And if you would, um, just in the chat function, if you'll change it to all attendees and give us your uh, name, email address, and phone number, that way agents know how they can reach you directly. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Lindsay. Okay, and we have one last partner to hear from, and uh, some of you may be familiar with their business, but they are um, a trusted partner of Platinum Top 50. We always hear great things uh, from our agents that use Action Tree Service. Derek Sledge, Action Tree Service, is with us this morning, and uh, I love that you're on with us. It's so great to see you. Thanks, Ashton. I appreciate it. I'm at, I'm at home with uh, my three kids, uh, seven and under, and a, and a brand new puppy. So there's a 50-50 chance uh, I'm going to have a toddler running here in a diaper with a, a puppy attacking him. So I want to apologize in advance if uh, there's any interruptions. So um, Hey, I think everybody here on the call is probably used to it and had something similar or worse. Um, so that, there's no problem with that, but um, I'm in a place where my toddler isn't running around, but if I was at home, it would be much similar. But um, man, That's Action it. Tree Service, y'all have been in business since 1995. So removing trees is what you do, uh, cleaning up listings, uh, damage control, you guys do it all. So tell us a little bit about your services and um, what you've got to offer our PT50 agents. Yeah, absolutely. So actually, we've been around in San Antonio since 1955. And like you said, we provide uh, tree trimming and tree removal. Um, uh, we, if you look up on Google, we've got great Google ratings. Uh, you don't pay until you're 100% satisfied. So we've got a lot of things that, uh, that cu customers and clients and PT top 50 people uh, can know they're working with a quality uh, tree company that's been around for a while. Uh, when I think about the best way that we partner uh, with you all and, and your customers is when someone pulls up to a, a new listing, um, first impressions are really important. I think uh, not only the outside of the house, but the um, if someone takes really good care of the trees, I do think it shows pride in home ownership. Um, so our our estimates are free and I'm just, um, I'm hopeful that uh, you all, if someone needs any type of tree care, that you'll just uh, keep us in mind and that uh, give us an opportunity to, uh, to win the business. Well, we love that. Um, again, a lot of great reviews for Action Tree Service Online. I'm gonna go ahead and put their URL in the uh, chat box for them. And then Derek, if you wanna throw in the phone number where they can get a, a free estimate, we'd love for you to do that too. But again, Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for bringing Tracy's presentation to the group. Y'all are in for a treat. So again, thank you to Action Tree Service for being a part of today's presentation. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for, for having me. I appreciate it. So great. Bye-bye. Well, now the moment you've all been waiting for, um, we are so excited. I am geeking out and I've already heard this presentation once. So I would imagine that you are all just as excited. Um, we are lied to every single day. Um, you'll find out soon from Tracy, but Tracy is a body language expert. 
uh, that is what makes her qualified to lead the dis this discussion. She's a leader of uh, training people and builds their bottom line by detecting deception. So she's here to help your business by finding those liars in your midst. She's a frequent guest on TV, interpreting body language of criminals and politicians. And sometimes both labels describe the same person. Uh, she even helps lawyers pick and persuade jury using body language. Here's a couple of fun facts. She's got a deal with Kevin Harrington, one of the sharks from ABC's hit show Shark Tank. She's also a former member of the U.S. National Psyche Cycling Team. She is a woman of many, many talents. And her new book, How to Detect Lies, Fraud, and Identity Thief, Theft, is hot off the press. Today, we are in for some fun. Like I said, she's going to share with us the secrets of exactly how to tell whose pants are on fire. So get ready. It's gonna get hot in here. Help me welcome silently or in the chat if you want to welcome Tracy Brown. Silent claps. Hello, hey, hello. Thanks, thanks for having me back. This is so fun. We did um, we did Austin last week, and yes. now we're going to San Antonio. And um, I'm coming to you from Colorado, uh, but I got to tell you, I'm a Texan. I grew up in Dallas, so I'd love to work with uh, with with Texans and people down there. And um, so hello from Colorado. Now, here's we're glad the, you're here. I'm going to share my screen. Let me share my screen here and get going. Okay. Now, here is the thing. The economy has changed. Things are different. Like the economy is down. I know your industry is up. Uh, but there's still been a lot of changes, right? Working from home, and there's a lot of people out of there out, out there that are out of work. And, and the, the bottom line is, when big shifts happen, when the economy goes down, fraud goes up. Now more than ever, people's pants are on fire around you, and you just have it noticed. And those lies can be very expensive. I mean, time, money and energy. So it's a good thing that you came today because all that loss stops now. My goal is for you to walk out of here knowing how to tell truth from lies and fact from fiction. Now, uh, I have been reading people for 20 years, uncovering secrets hidden in plain sight. I, I get asked by the media on a daily basis to comment on big events, uh, things that change the fate of the world, crimes, politics, billion dollar business deals and if the couples on the bachelor are really in love <laughs> yeah it's fascinating and i never run out of things to talk about but for all the big events that i wind up in the middle of this information has been most useful to me personally <laughs> when i was dating yeah so when i heard oh i had a great time i'll call you next week I never had to wait by the phone. And now that I'm married, <laughs> it's even handier. Now, I love my husband. He is cute and smart and sweet. He's actually a rocket scientist, like a, like for real. And uh, with all those good things going for him, we have a couple things uh, that are, you know, points of contention. Uh, one of them is how much clutter is okay at the house. And so we've had to come to an agreement um, that was especially important back, you know, in the old days when I was traveling to do keynotes, that um, the house was going to be as clean or cleaner when I got home than before I left. So um, one day uh, back in, in February, it was before the pandemic hit, and I had been traveling around uh, the country speaking, I, uh, I got home and he greets me at the door. He never greets me at the door, but he looks me in the eye and he says, I have spent the last five hours cleaning the house. I cleaned the entire thing. And I looked right back at him and I knew he was lying, but I wanted to be sweet. So I said, honey, why are you, why are you lying to me this time? And he goes, dang it, I have been practicing. What does it take to get a lie by you? And I said, he goes, what, was, was it my body language? What happened? And I said, babe, no, uh, you were fine. I said, but I can just, I can see all the dishes piled up in the sink behind you. <laughs> yeah. So. Knowing how to detect lies is important. Lies can be hurtful, dangerous, and very, very expensive. Now, I've been lucky enough to study right alongside some of our country's top law enforcement, FBI, police, Green Berets, people I believe could not tell me they were in the CIA. And I have boiled it down for you here today. You're gonna be blown away by how cool this is because it's all in the body language. Now, um, I, uh, I didn't get started reading body language because I'm involved with the FBI or police that, that you know about. Although 
I think I'd make a pretty good spy. No, I actually got started reading body language from bike racing. Um, you heard Ashton say, I, I did, I, I used to be a, a professional bike racer. I got really good at it, but when I started, I learned one thing really quickly, and that is that cycling is for little people, like five, six, and skinny or, or smaller. And I'm a big person, I'm five, nine, and skinny but uh all that different the weight difference is huge in the sport and so i had to i couldn't rely on my strength alone just to keep up i had to keep track of my competition and and over time i i, I started to notice that they were broadcasting what was going to happen next and that was the information to me it was all in their body language so i would look for little things like the drop of the shoulder or the waggle of their hips and uh, over time, I was able to use that information to start to understand what was going to happen next. And I needed it because um, there was some pretty stiff competition showing up at, at the training rides. There was this guy, his name was Lance. Maybe you heard of him. <laughs> yeah, he was really fast. And, and um, he was just one of those guys, though, him and his buddies, one of those guys that you just get this feeling from like, like, you know, they're up to no good and you don't know what it is. Like, do you have people like that in your life? Yeah. It, like if it's not the people you work with or maybe some of your clients, it's definitely your kids. <laughs> yeah. He was that guy in my life. It didn't matter if it was in a training ride that he showed up for or the times that I would jump in the men's races and race right alongside him. There was just something fishy. And I just thought I had a hunch, all of us did those years ago, all those years ago about what was going on with him. And uh, so let's just put some science behind the hunches that you have so you can find the liars in your life. Now, first thing you gotta get, you wanna learn how to read body language, you gotta understand one thing, you gotta pay attention differently. Most of us are paying so much attention to ourselves, we are not paying attention to what's going on outside of us. And like I said, I, I learned this from bike racing. When I, when I moved up here to Boulder, Colorado, which is where I live now, I met my coach and his name was Wally. And he was this big cowboy guy, not the kind of guy you'd expect to be a cycling coach. And he'd say, Trace, you got to pay attention or you pay with pain. And he was right. He would tell me this at these times that my lack of attention was costing me a victory. And when you pour that much of your life into just getting across the finish line before anyone else, that's a lot of pain. So have you ever thought like, what's the pain in your business of not paying attention? Well, uh, there's a lot of things. I really, it amounts, I think, to hassles and lost revenue, right? So things like, uh, do you know, was that deposit really made in the, in the proper amount, like by your team? Do you know that? Or um, is your staff, like the people you work for, are they happy or are they, are they leaving? Um, Oh, what about that potential client? Do they really need to talk to their wife or their husband first, right? These are the things you got to pay attention to. When you get to the truth, you can move forward differently and get a lot more deals done. So um, next thing you got to get, next thing you got to get after you're paying attention is you got to understand one thing. You lie every day, every day you lie. And I can hear what you're saying in your mind saying, Tracy, I would never lie. Yes, you, you lie every day. Now, not all these lies are big and evil and fraudulent. A lot of, they're, they're, most of them are just little. They're just little lies just to smooth things over. Little white lies, things to make people feel better maybe. Uh, things to just uh, move your day along a little more quickly. Uh, so how many of you have been to your 20 year high school reunion? Or maybe 30, it could, not so much 10, but uh, you, you see someone you hadn't seen them in a long time. And uh, in your mind, you think, mm, Time's not been good to them. But then what do you say <laughs> when you see them when you talk to them in person uh, or close up? You say, you know what? You haven't changed a bit. You look fantastic. <laughs> you ever done it? This was my seventh grade best. I thought my hair looked good that day. Uh, but yeah, just uh, no, you're a liar, right? When you say that kind of stuff. If I haven't changed for the better, don't tell me. Now, uh, otherwise that, that you may tell things like, uh, oh, my phone died. I'm sorry I didn't call you back. So, 
sorry about that. Now, it doesn't make you a bad person, just makes you a liar. But you can start to see how these lies add up through the day. Now, uh, let's see, a couple other lies you may tell, things like, oh, honey, that was delicious. Now, I love it. I love it when my husband cooks every now and then. Doesn't turn out so good, but I want to keep encouraging him. So, yes, this is what I say. Now, um, Let's see, all of you are in, are in uh, real estate, dealing with clients, you gotta schmooze a little bit. Um, you ever say, just tell them I'm in a meeting. I, now, here's the thing, I just wanna go to your meetings with you. Let's go out to Pebble Beach, okay? <laughs> but you're busted. Now, um, let's see, I think we have one lie that everyone has told, everyone's told this lie. Yes, I have read and agreed to the terms and conditions on this website <laughs> now if you actually have read the terms we need people like you you might be a nerd though you might be a nerd keep doing what you do we love you report back to the rest of us <laughs> okay <laughs> nerds we need you you're so lovable yeah so um I'm gonna give you permission to lie in one little instance, just permission in one little instance. And uh, when you get asked this question, do these jeans make my butt look big? Use your wisdom. Don't take the first thing that comes in, right? The answer is always no. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot of different lies. Uh, but we can lean on body language to start to reveal a lot of them. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of lies. This is from my studies with the, oh, no, wait, oh, hang on. I've gotten ahead of myself because there's one more kind of lie. One more kind of lie that, um, that, that is out there uh, besides the ones that I learned uh, from the FBI. So, so we got fabrications, omissions, exaggerations, minimizations, and deceptive denials. Now they're all different kinds of lies. They all look the same, but like I said, there's one more kind of lie. It's been scientifically proven, just came out, what, three, three and a half years ago. Alternative facts, <laughs> brand new kind of lie. So here's the thing though. It's the alternative facts that get you. Every time it's the alternative facts. It's the lies woven into the truth, right? And these are the ones that can be really expensive. Like it can run, it can run anything from, um, are you really the last one that they're talking to before making their decision of who they're going to go with? Um, you know, what happened to the petty cash, things like that, things like, uh, if, you know, if you're looking to work, uh, hire someone, because I know that you all are so busy right now, did you know 40% of people lie on their resume or in a job interview in a material way, and 2% of people can pick it out, right? And you think not having someone on board is expensive, having the wrong person on board is a lot more expensive than that, right? But um, it, it, it could it could run from things like that to, are you sure that that was your client who wanted to change the wire transfer information at the last minute, right? That is one that can be really expensive. And there's been all kind of uh, uh, earnest money and uh, down payment uh, mortgage inter intercepts. Like I even talked to some people uh, in this group who've experienced that, right? So you got to make sure that you're getting to the truth. Now, um, let's see, how are we going to do this? How are we going to get in to reading body language? Well, the basic premise here is that the body can't lie. Words can lie, but the body can't lie. So you got to believe the body first, take the words with a grain of salt. Okay. And so you want to look for mismatches between the body language and the words. So what would that look like? Well, we're going to start easy. We're going to get harder as we go. So for American people, this means yes, and this means no. Okay. So that is hardwired into us. So when you see a mismatch, it looks something like this. I would never do that. Right. Or you can ask me anything. <laughs> you see that? Or, it, you know, it could be a little bit uh, more veiled, sweetly, things like, oh, that's a beautiful baby. <laughs> or even Bill Clinton did this to all of us. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, <laughs> right? Right there in front of all of us. And so I want you to start to get that, uh, not only in, in your personal, like people that, that you deal with every day, but also, you know, we're going into a political cycle that's already 
a whopper. They're both already screaming fraud. It's going to be crazy. So um, I want you to be able to tune in to whatever channel you like. Just watch some snippets. Get the truth for, you, for yourself and not get sucked in. And, you know, make an educated decision based on what's important to you. I don't care if you... Um, I don't care who you vote for. I just care that you make an educated vote based on the truth. So um, I got to tell you, we could talk about body language all we want. Um, I thought it would be better because I brought some videos along or I have some, have some queued up and we're going to dive in so we can see some people and uh, figure out if they're telling the truth or not. So I just got to warn you though, it's about to get hot in here. It's about to get hot. People's pants are going to burst into flames. So from here on out, whenever we see flames on the screen, I'm going to say liar, liar. You're going to say, you can type it in the chat box or just say it out loud. You got it. Pants on fire. Now, um, I, I know the demographic of the group here, so I'm sure we have a lot of members of Bachelor Nation. Oh, wait, we, hang on. We don't. Okay. Don't worry. I'll catch you up now. This, uh, for those of you, I'm sure there's a few of you who watch. This is Ben and Ben. The drama was off the charts uh, a couple years ago when he was a bachelor because he was in love with two women and he had to propose to one of them because that's always a good time to propose is on a tight TV deadline. <laughs> so let's uh, see what happens when Jojo pins him down. Jojo's going to pin him down and uh, just knowing what you know now, let's see what the truth is. Now, um, I got to, let's have a little caveat here or a little um, note on how you can optimize your experience. Sometimes the audio and the video doesn't match up perfectly. And if it's not matching up, if it's not synced for you, I need you to take responsibility of your experience. And for the videos, go ahead, turn the volume down. You'll be able to see everything you need to. So knowing that, let's see what you think about Ben. Here we go. Like, I haven't asked you, or do you think that you're at a place with whoever that a proposal is what you would want to do? Yeah. <laughs> seen that hundreds of times and every time it gets me do you think he was ready to propose to jojo or the other girl no absolutely not he showed it right there here's what happened he actually did propose to the other girl whose name was you know it lauren and <laughs> and they moved here to Denver and they lived for about a year, year and a half, and then they broke up. So he could have skipped, if he had been honest with himself, honest with the ladies, could have skipped all that time and really moved on with some something in his life that was more um, workable, right, for him. And so, yeah, he totally lied. And, um, Here's the funny thing, because I do live near Denver, very near Denver. Every now and then, someone in one of my talks will know him and try to connect us. He is avoiding me like the plague. I just have a couple questions, but I think we can call this one like we see it. Come on, y'all. Liar, liar. Pants on fire. That is right. Now, um, I told you, we're starting easy. We're getting harder as we go. So no talk from me would be complete without giving Lance Armstrong a hard time. Uh, Cause like I said, I grew up with the guy. Uh, we raced uh, in Dallas uh, together on the same bike shop team. We raced on Team USA at the same time. And um, he is now admittedly the biggest fraud in all of sports. Cause for years and years, he denied all those performance enhancing drugs. Like I said, we all knew something was going on. We just didn't know what it was exactly. And so uh, for years and years, he denied it. So let's take a look, three separate videos, just knowing what you know now, three separate little clips. How many lies do you see? And I want you to type it in the chat box when we're done. And um, Ashton's going to help moderate to see, because I can't see the chat box right now. Um, so how many lies do you see? Here we go. I have never doped. I've never taken performance enhancing drugs. My best defense is I've never tested positive. All right. Type it in the chat box. How many lies do you see? One, two, or three. Ashton, let me know what the consensus is here. Consensus is three. 
three. Okay, yeah. okay. Do we have some twos or? There's a, there's one, two. Yeah, one, two. Yeah, everybody else is a three. Everybody else is, oh, wow. That's, I can tell that you all work with people. You're good at watching people because the answer is three. Now, we're going to watch this again. If you said two, I want you to watch the third one really closely. It's, it's more of an up and down movement. It's not so much of a definitive head nod. Okay, so take a look. Here we go. I have never doped. I've never taken performance enhancing drugs. My best defense is I've never tested positive. There, did you see it? When you know what to look for, it's easy to see. What we're doing here is raising your sensory acuity. That's how much you're paying attention to what goes on outside of you. Okay. And so let's, let's just take this um, minute here really quickly to, to start to understand why does body language seem to go haywire when people are being deceptive. Well, um, here's what happens. Your brain has to do a lot more thinking and it actually goes into cognitive overload so that um, you have to add in time uh, because lies aren't connected to time. Lies aren't connected to emotion. You have to remember the story. You have to decide if you need to make up more story. You have to understand how you're being received and is it working or not, right? So all these things happen. Body language falls off the plate and you end up like Lance, just lying for years and years. Liar, liar. That's right. Pants on fire. Now, here's the thing. Uh, one day Lance woke up. He woke up and he goes, you know what? Today is the day. I am going to admit all of my drug use. So, so he didn't do anything different than any of the rest of us would have done. Because, you know, whenever you need to admit anything in this country, you call it Oprah, right? That's what you do. Any of us would have done it too. And so here, here's why we're watching this is because we have, um, well, it, with our law enforcement, the number one thing that they want to look for, for in deceptive behavior is a shift in baseline. So we all have a way that we behave, right? And then when generally the way that we behave shifts, we have, it's, it's a shift in baseline behavior. We know that deception may be present and it takes some really skilled questioning in order to uh, sometimes pull the answers out and pull the truth out. However, um, Let's take a look here at Lance. Let's see, how is his baseline different, right? When he's telling the truth, or is it mostly the truth? Uh, what are one or two signs that say, wait a minute, he's not planning on telling the whole truth here. Here we go. Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. Did you ever blood dope or use blood transfusions to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. In all seven of your Tour de France victories, did you ever take banned substances or blood dope? Yes. All right, what did we see here? What was different? You wanna, uh, let, let's type it in the chat box. What, do you, what did you see that was different? And what did you see that was the one or two signs that says, wait a minute, he's not planning on telling the whole truth here. So type it in the chat box. Ashton's going to moderate. Let's hear what you think, or let's see what you think, I guess. What was different? What's the one or two things that says, wait a minute, is he really going to tell the whole truth? Uh, there are some that are identifying like his nodding, kind mm -hmm. of the shift in his eyes. Uh, pursed lips, licked his lips, his mouth and eye movements were different, his eyes shifted and his lips were pursed. Okay, okay, so let's talk about the lips first because that, that's the one thing that I wanted you to see that was the, hang on, he's holding something back, okay? So when people's lips disappear, like this, when they get sucked back in over their teeth, they're holding something back. It could be emotion or it could be facts, okay? So here's the thing. Okay, here, you really want to pay attention when you start seeing the signs of deception, you can't just keep talking, okay, because obviously you're all in sales, you want to get to the truth, so you understand what's going on in your customer's mind. When you see things like this, don't just keep talking, stop, ask questions and say, you know what, it seems like some, something's, like, what else are you thinking about 
I don't know, the way that the sun comes in this window at noon, right? It could be anything like that, the color of the carpet um, that when they're looking for a home, uh, the way it faces on the street, it could be anything, but you don't know. You know they're holding something back. Make sure that you find out what it is. And a great way to do that is to ask the question and then you know what you do? Be quiet. Be quiet, like you expect an answer. You're gonna be shocked at what comes out of their mouth next. So yeah, that's the one thing that I wanted you to see. He did hold back a lot of information in this and I'll get to that in a minute. Now, um, what was the difference in his baseline? Well, truthful people do and say the minimum that they need to do and say in order to get the truth across. Okay, and so in the first set of videos, did you see he was like a bobblehead? He was like a bobblehead. And here he's more um, refined, he's more direct. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we saw a big difference there. Now, deception detection actually comes at the intersection of body language, tone, and words. Okay, so it's not just body language, and actually, tone and words can be bigger indicators of deception than just body language. So you want us, again, we're expanding our uh, sensory acuity. That's how much we're paying attention to everything around us. It kind of builds on itself. And his tone in the first set of videos was very convincing. He had a little bit of anger in there. Whereas with um, this video, he is conveying information. Okay, so convincing often connected to deception conveying often connected to truth, all right? So you can start to kind of remember that. And, um, and he said a lot less words here. So um, here, here's the thing. I found out what he was holding back and why he did this, because I, um, <laughs> I actually ended up sitting next to his adopted dad on a, on a plane a couple years ago, flying down to Dallas. And he, um, he has this, his, it turns out his hobby is baiting people into telling him that he's Lance Armstrong's dad. And he didn't know me. We hadn't met all those years ago. And so I just said, Hey, we were on Southwest. I said, Hey, will you, will you sit by me on the plane? I, uh, I got some real questions. Will you give me some real answers? And we talked for an hour and a half. Here's the thing. Lance was trying to get ahead of a very incriminating, um, a very incriminating report that was coming out the next week. And he said, Lance always has to look like the good guy. Okay. And that's a hallmark trait of a narcissist in which we see in, in uh, Washington all the time, both sides. Okay. I'm not I'm getting on one side or the other, but uh, have you noticed people always try to make themselves look like the good guy doing and saying what they need to in order to think that they've done a good job of that. So he falls right into that category and, um, and does and says, anything in order to get there. So um, I think it's safe because he's admitted now. Uh, he's been stripped of seven Tour de France titles for all that drug use and we can do it. It'll make you feel good. Come on, liar, liar. Pants on fire. That's right. Now, um, I want to make sure that you really know how to use this, how to apply it in your business. So, so things like, um, I know some of you are in home home warranty, or or, or you 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 speak to uh, residents or or um, tenants as they may be, or or even homeowners, and they may say things like, you know what, I I have changed the air filters quarterly, like I really have. <laughs> How many of you have seen that? Or um, let's see, I, I, you know, I don't have time for more clients, right? Or um, renters will do this. Uh, even, even people who may um, be selling a house, you know, I, I, I don't have dogs, right? No, no dogs in here. <laughs> um, or, you know, buyers, they say, you know, is, is it really in their budget? Um, oh, our tax returns, they look great. Tax returns look great. Credit just you know, you're not going to find any problems at all. Um, so there's a lot of ways that lies can sneak in and hopefully you find them. Hopefully you do before things get too far down the road and just waste your time, right? So um, we got to do one more here. One more. And uh, let's just, let's just take a look. Can, you remember Deflategate? <laughs> yeah, Deflategate, Tom Brady. What happened to two pounds of air in the footballs? Now, um, we don't have time to baseline Tom right now, but let me just tell you how it, how it is. Because remember, you always want to look for baseline behavior, and then you can look for the shifts. 
um, he's usually totally smooth. He's got it all handled, all figured out. And let's just see what are some of the signs of deception that we talked about. And then are there any more going on? We're going to watch two clips. Here we go. You know, I didn't alter the ball in any way. I have no knowledge of anything. I have no knowledge of any uh, wrongdoing of any... Nobody did anything wrong. Yeah, I'm very comfortable saying that. I'm very comfortable saying that nobody did it. As far as I know, I don't know everything. I also understand that I, you know, was in the locker room preparing for a game for five hours. I don't know what happened over the course of the process with the footballs. Because I would never do anything outside of the, the, the rules of play. I would never, you know... Uh, you know, have someone do something that I thought was outside of the, the, so the never, never, I was very shocked to hear it. So I almost laughed it off thinking it wasn't, you know, that was more sour grapes than anything. Um, and it ended up, you know, it ends up being a very serious thing. Then he was asked point blank if he was a cheater. <laughs> I don't believe so. I mean, I feel like I've always played within the rules, I would never do anything to break the rules. Um, you know, I believe in fair play and I respect the league and, you know, everything that they're doing to try to create a very competitive uh, playing field for all the NFL teams. All right. What'd you think of that? Oh my gosh. Okay. So first thing you got to get, when you really want to get into detecting deception, you need more than just one tell. Okay. You need, you need several, they call them hot spots, and they need to be in a, in a cluster. So let's talk about what we're seeing here. So first, first clip, he can't get a word out. He's stuttering. He's stammering. Vocal error rate is one of the biggest indicators of deception. Here's why. Your mind goes at about 1,250 words a minute. Your mouth goes at about mm, 120 to 150 words a minute. So he's gone through several scenarios in his mind and they have a hard time getting out the mouth. Okay, so that's hot spot number one. Next, we see uh, he gets asked point blank, are you a cheater? Now this is a yes or no question. And he does several things. First thing he does, you see him start to rock in place like this. That's because he's running in place. We have the least control unconsciously over our feet. So his unconscious mind is going, this is dangerous. We gotta, we gotta go. His conscious mind's going, nope, we gotta stay. And so you get this running in place. And then he smiles really big. Do you see that smile? There's no reason to smile for at such an incriminating question. And there's a term for that. It's called duper's delight. He's having fun. He thinks he's getting away with it, right? And, that, and this is deeply unconscious. And then we see his lips disappear. We saw that. So how many hot spots are we up to? I think it's four. And then he says, remember, yes or no question. He says, I don't believe so. Are you a cheater? I don't believe so, right? And <laughs> For one, we talked about that um, truthful people will say the minimum that they need to say. He said, I don't believe so, which not only is four words to say what should be one, which is hell no, which is actually two words, um, but he also indicates that he's operating in some kind of gray area, right? And, and I found out what it is. Because uh, one of the Denver Broncos coaches was in my talk not long ago, and he um, came up to me afterwards. He goes, here's the deal. For years and years and years in the NFL, uh, kickers have been putting air in the ball. Quarterbacks have been taking it out. It's just how the game was played. And the, the, um, the Colts, I believe, had enough of Tom Brady, and they turned him in. So here we have deflate gate. Uh, what do you think about old Tom? I'll tell you what I do, and I'm so sorry, Patriots fans, but we got to do it. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> That's right. Now, um, let me see how we're doing on time. Okay, we're doing good. Now, here's- Hey, Tracy, uh, real fast. I want to oh, yeah. jump in because we got a question oh, yeah, um, yeah. from one of, our, one of our partners. Hey, Tom Valenti. Um, he wanted to know, um, and it really pertains to like the baseline conversation that you mentioned earlier. Okay, cool. um, people that always purse their lips and or tuck their lips in, if that's part of the way that they talk, it seems. One person that comes to mind for him is Kobe Bryant. He's a big fan. In his interviews, he seemed to always do weird things uh, with his lips. Is that a, sometimes it's a tick or it's a natural thing, or is that kind of always an indicator that they're lying? Well, there's always some meaning there. And um, what I would encourage you to do is when, when you see clips, um, send them to me, because I'll tell you what they, what they mean. There's a lot of different 
things that um, lip movements can indicate. So I don't want to make a blanket statement, um, but just think about, you know, he's interviewed like Tom Brady every day, just about. Um, and so it it's normal, like you never tell everything to the press. So could he be holding back? Yeah. Could he be, um, could he have moments of happiness, sadness, disgust, contempt? Yes. All of that can be seen um, in the, in the mouth. And, and I'd be happy to take a look at those for you. So, um, th that's, that's about the best I can do on that and keep my answer, um, legitimate. <laughs> so, um, let's see, but you want to know more, you want to know more. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, pick up your phone. I know your phone is right next to you. You might be on it right now and text the word lies, L I E S lies to the number 22828. And here's what I will do for you. I will send you videos of famous people lying on TV. And uh, I got, uh, who do I have on there? Um, oh, Tanya Harding, that's a good one. Uh, Sarah Palin, I got a bunch of other ones on there. And um, you can see that. I'll also send you my newsletter every month. And in it, you know, we talk about now and i try to stay out of politics as much as i as i can on that um so text the word lies to 22828 i'll also send you links to um uh, join me. I want, I'd want. i love to stay in touch with you on Facebook and LinkedIn. I put my media articles on there and I will um, also send you a link to my fraud busting podcast. I interview all sorts of um, criminals, uh, people who've been defrauded and, um, and even some of the cops that have busted them. Uh, I interview them on my podcast and it's, it's I, th I think it's fascinating. So I have, a, I got a mafia princess on there. I got Britain's greatest fraudster. I got some guys who've been on the FBI or Secret Service most wanted list. Um, a lot of them. Oh, the guys who busted the Mc, McDonald's uh, McMillions. Um, you probably saw that on uh, HBO. McDonald's uh, Monopoly game was taken over by the mafia for a while. So I got those guys that, that busted it. So anyway, it's super interesting. Now, here is what we are going to do. Because um, let's make this a little more real. I thought, oh, and I got a book too. I got a book. Um, How to Detect Lies, Fraud, and Identity Theft. You can find it online. Just grab yourself a copy. Now, um, we're going to play a game. And I, I think I'm going to unshare my screen for this. We're going to play a game called Real Confessions. And we're going to see how our lie detection and interrogation skills really go. So um, let's bring up, who do we have? We have Tom and Lindsay, who I have prepped ahead of time. So can we bring, uh, I think we're going to do Tom first. Were we doing you first, Tom? I guess. There you are. Like okay. I said, I don't okay. want to follow Lindsay, you know? Oh, okay. Uh, that's, so that's, that's always a tough first. follow. Okay. So here is what we're going to do. Let me, ex let me, uh, let me get the chat here. Oh, we got a lot of chats. Okay. Um, here is the game. The game goes like this. You've probably seen it on Jimmy Fallon. Okay. So in, um, I have emailed Tom. Tom has received two emails from me this morning. In one email uh, that he has not looked at, right? Tom, you haven't looked at the emails? Mm, no. No. Okay, that doesn't sound convincing. Tom might have peaked. Okay, no, so. No, I haven't actually. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, one email is something that actually happened and the other email contains a lie. Now, um, the audience is gonna pick in the chat box, do we want Tom to open email one or email two? Just type it in the chat box and then I will interrogate Tom for a minute to, and then what we're going to do as a group is see if he's telling the truth or if he's lying. Okay, so we got a lot of ones. I think we got mostly ones here. So I see a lot um, of twos. Oh, you, do you want to do two? Oh, we're about. Uh, I don't time. know. It doesn't matter to me. Let, let's go with let's go with one, Tom. Let's just go. Let's just make okay. a decision. We'll go with one. So open email one. The one that you sent me at nine eighteen. The first one. It right? says number one. Yeah, I don't know what time it was. It was something like that. Oh, there yeah. it is, number one. Number okay. one. Yeah, and so just scroll down. Read oh, okay, it quick, I see it. Okay. Tell it to us like it's the truth, and then uh, we're gonna ask uh, questions. Well, back in two thousand six, I had my own no, no, uh, company. No, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. No, just just read what it says. There's oh, no my office burned down. Okay, now we're gonna have a minute to interrogate you. Okay, so um, we heard, what year was this? Oh, uh, that was in 2006. 
2006. Okay. And what kind of business what was it? What mortgage, company? mortgage company. Mortgage company. And uh, what, uh, what happened? Well, uh, there was an electrical fire caused by the, uh, there was a, um, uh, a laundromat that was just redone down, down in the same uh, strip center. And apparently the wiring was not good. And, and then like, how, how did this play? Were you in the office or? Actually what? I was in, it was a Saturday. I was in the office and I left about 1230 and I got the call about one o'clock. Thought I left oh, the coffee so pot it was, on. It was quick after you left. Yeah. And then, and then what happened? Did you rush back there? I mean, did you get anything out? What like? Yeah, I tried to get, out? oh, you couldn't get anything out. The place was very old and hit a metal roof and all, you know, wood. So it just went up very quickly. And it was a bar two doors down. So the bar sort of exacerbated the fire. Oh, the bar. Oh, so they weren't serving drinks. The alcohol was going up in flames. No, the alcohol was burning pretty good. Oh, okay, okay. And then um, what uh, what town was this in? Hey, Lotus, Holotus. Holotus. Oh, I've yeah. never been there. Yeah, okay. it's just outside of San Antonio. Oh, okay, okay. And do we have any more questions from the from the uh, audience? Anything else we want to ask Tom about this to find out if he's telling the truth or not? Type it in. Oh, what what company was it? It was called Into Homes. Into Homes. Okay, and here's one, Tom. Did you set the fire? I thought I set the fire. I thought I left the coffee pot on, but I did not set the fire. Oh, you didn't. Okay. Um, let's see. Did you did you set the fire? What company? Okay, I think we got all of them. So, interrogation is over. You can take a deep breath. And Phew. audience, what do you think? Is he telling a lie or telling the truth? Okay, we got some truth. Oh, we got a lie. We got truth. We got truth. Oh, we got some lies. Oh, we're about, I think we're mostly on truth. Okay, so Tom, what, tell us, is it a truth or is it a lie? It's, the, it's actually the truth. Back wow. in, two, it was October 30, 2006, uh, my office did burn down. And it was probably the best thing ever happened to me because oh. it allowed me to join Legacy right after that. Oh, wow. Okay, so, so there's a silver lining. Okay. Yep. It was a, a bad thing turned into a wonderful thing. I did get my, um, I got my database out of it after the fire was over. They couldn't get the water over to the, uh, to the building. The fire department was right across the street, but they didn't have any water to go across. So the whole thing pretty well burned down. Wait, the fire department was across the street. They didn't have any water? No, they didn't have any water. That's why they redid the strip center right there. Um, right there in Holotus when you first go into Holotus. So. Oh, dang. <laughs> okay. Well, I never heard of a fire department without water, but um, I guess that's what we got. Yeah. So thank you so much, Tom. Thank you all. Y'all you know, did good. Clap, clap for Tom or tell, tell him he was awesome in the chats because everybody likes to know they're awesome. Okay. We have one more. We have one, more, maybe two more. We might have a surprise third one. Okay. Next up is Lindsay. Lindsay, bring yourself up. Oh, there you are. Hi. 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 Okay. I talked to Lindsay this morning. She was nervous. She was like, Tracy, what do I have to do? Lindsay, I was like, Lindsay, nothing. We're, we're good. Okay. So audience, do, it's the same game. Same thing. I have talked to Lindsay. I have sent her two emails. Which one do we want her to open? Type it in the chat box. Which one? Number one or number two? We got a lot of twos. Oh, we're straight twos. We are... Okay, let's go with number two. Lens, open up number two, read it to us. Just, just read the statement on there and then we'll interrogate you, okay? So uh, I once wore a gorilla suit to the office. Oh, okay, all right, here we go. Interrogation and audience. If you have questions that I'm missing, type them in. Lens, what year was this? This was in 2018. 2018 so a couple years ago and why uh well where'd you get the gorilla suit so i got the gorilla suit at target they had a little gorilla onesie that i went and grabbed a onesie okay uh well now was this for halloween what was it for no so um it was just out they had a bunch of different onesies and different outfits um at target and so i ran to the guy section and um, saw the gorilla one and grabbed it and headed back to my office. Oh, so it was fast. It, okay, it was now, um, do you still have the suit? 
I don't. No, nope, I do not have the Gorilla Seed anymore. It was a one-time use and I was, I was done with it from there. Oh, what company were you with? First American Title. Oh, okay, okay. And um, why a gorilla suit? <clears throat> so one of my coworkers, um, she's an assistant, and um, obviously we're all sales, um, and so it, so it's uh, you know they we get the fun side of it, and they get the um, hard paperwork side of it. And so she was having a really rough day, and she was just in her cubicle, her head was down, she was just struggling really hard. And so I wanted to make it fun and make it a good day for her. So I grabbed the uh, gorilla suit at little onesie and went back to my office and had um, my other coworkers kind of surround her area, um, her cubicle and start recording. And so as she's at her desk handling everything and don't worry, she wasn't in the middle of a funding, she was, um, processing a transaction. She, um, I came up on her and scared her with this gorilla suit on and started banging my chest and screaming. And I'm like, Hey, how are you? It's great to see you. Um, and she, I mean, we all laughed and uh, had a good time and it was, it was really funny, but yeah, just a one-time use for me. One-time use. Okay. Okay. Audience, are we missing any questions here? Are we missing any questions? Anybody else have a question? Okay, I think we're good. Now it's time, we gotta decide. Is she telling the truth or a lie? Type it in, oh, we got some lie. Oh, Tom thinks you're lying, believable. Truth, lie, lie, lying, wow, she's a great liar. <laughs> okay, Martin. truth sounds like Lindsay. Okay, all right, uh, Lindsay, what do you think? It was the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. You got a gorilla suit. I want to know what happened to it. I mean, it just what like did it? We just we just decided to give it back. We're like we're done. We kept the tags on and returned it. We just you returned it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole office is like, are we gonna ever use this again? Or do we have any other branches we need to scare? And we just decided to get rid of it. So oh my gosh, you are too funny. That is too good. So um, okay, now we have we have two minutes. So um, we have a choice here, audience. We can go a couple minutes over and, and I, can, I can do it. I'm prepped to play the game. And Ashton, you can let us know if that's okay. Or we can answer questions or be done. So what do you want to do? Do you want to do it one more time? Or does anybody have any questions? I mean, how are you feeling out there? Type it hey, in. Hey, let's or... do it. Let's do it one more time. And you if people need, to, okay. people need to run, they can jump off. But if people are having fun, they can stay on. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So usually when I do this in front of a lot, thank you, Lindsay, you're awesome. And tell Lindsay, she's awesome in the chat. Usually um, what I do with the audience is I'll do it myself and everybody's up on stage. Now, um, <clears throat> I have three here. So you want to pick this one, uh, the middle one, or the other one. Type it in the chat box. We're seeing number two. I see a lot of twos. Middle. Okay, let's go two. We'll go two. And you should have a pretty good baseline on me because you've watched me talk for like an hour. And here we go. Okay. I have played catch with Peyton Manning. And Ashton, you can uh, interrogate and people, um, you can type in the box. I, I've uh, played catch with Peyton Manning. What year was this, Tracy? Where was it? Yeah, what, what year was this? Oh, then, what Tracy? year was it? It was probably, what, like five years ago, maybe? Okay, five years ago. And uh, where did this happen? It was in Denver down here at um, where the Broncos practice, Valley Ranch. Or it's not Valley Ranch. That's where the Cowboys practice uh, or used to. Um, what is it? It's uh, Dove Valley is what they call it. What kind of ball did you what kind of ball? Throw? Oh, it was a yeah. football. Oh, was it? Good, good. Of course, um, yes. What was the what was the outside temperature estimated when you were throwing this ball? Well, it was like training camp, right? So it was mm -hmm. um what, 90 or something like that. And how did you get this opportunity to throw the ball with Peyton Manning? Oh, it was a media day. I got a lot of friends in the media, so I kind of went down there with a with a friend. And so they just gave you a pass and you got to go out and hang out with Peyton Manning. Yeah, well, it was, it wasn't like a lot of hanging out. It was like a little bit of hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of hanging out. Um, anybody else have any other questions? 90s, don't think so. She can't lies, throw, lies, I lies. Can't everyone, throw, I do not else. throw like a girl, Chris Garcia. Yeah, have you, did you ever do any other sports besides cycling? 
Oh yeah, I did. I did a lot of them. Um, like uh, softball, I did a lot of softball and basketball, and volleyball. Okay, and did you throw to him or did he throw to you? And then is he right-handed or left-handed? He's right-handed, and he threw to me. Was the ball deflated? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is just very funny. Um, and did you catch it? Did you catch the ball that he threw Of course to? I caught it. Oh, my gosh. I caught it on the run. Come on, y'all. Come on. On the, on the run. Okay. You want to keep going? Any I think questions? we're good. I think we're okay. good. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Truth or lies? <laughs> lies. Everybody it is, a, lies. it is such a lie. It is such a lie. <laughs> I have not played catch with Peyton Manning, but I totally want to. So here's the thing. If, it, if you thought it was a lie, why? Why did you think it was a lie? That's, that's what is important, is why you thought it was a lie. I what mean, did you think, Ashton? You were watching. Well I, well, I mean, for me, watching kind of the shifting in your, your seat, um, it wasn't really so much what you said, because I know it's hard to recall facts like that, but you did shake your head kind of the wrong direction, and then there was a lot of shifting in your seat. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's a total lie. <laughs> someone <laughs> said too much. Someone said too much movement, but then you said you caught the ball. Yeah, of course. I, I would always catch the ball. God, like, <laughs> like what I, these these people are giving you a hard time. Like they don't they don't trust that you can catch it. I would catch the ball. You can throw me any ball, and I would catch it. Um, uh, someone did ask, "What's the difference when looking up left to right? Like, is there anything to do with your eye shift, or is that more of a baseline thing?" Oh, right. So that's a baseline thing. Very good. You picked that up from the last time. So the, uh, some of you, because uh, I know you're all uh, in sales, you've you've uh, familiarized yourself with neuro linguistics, and maybe you see the eye pattern charts in the books. First thing I want you to do when you get off this call, go find that book. Uh, find that page, rip it out, wad it up, and throw it away, okay? You want to compare people to themselves, not to that chart, because it turns out the accuracy it can be very, very low on that. So um, make sure that, that you're comparing people to themselves, and um, that, that will pay off really big for you. Yeah. I love it. Any other, any other closing thoughts to share with the group before we well, wrap it yeah, up? Well, there, yeah, there's probably one question I haven't answered, just one, because you're probably thinking, Tracy, you raced against Lance Armstrong. Who won? Like, I haven't answered that, so I'll just let you know it, it was me. <laughs> it was me. Thank you, everybody. Please stay in touch. When I can help you out, let me know. Love it. Yeah, be sure you text Tracy again. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to Legacy Mutual Mortgage, First American Title, Tom Lindsay. Y'all are awesome participants. Derek at Action Tree Service, we will send a follow-up. Uh, we will have a recording of this if you want to re-watch it. And for all the agents that are still on, applications for PT50 close Monday, August 31st. So you just have a few more days to submit your application for 2021 recognition. And so I would encourage you to go and do that immediately. Tracy Brown, thank you so much. Mwah, thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. See you soon. Thanks okay, so bye, much, everybody. Bye-bye.